All right, so welcome to the uh, Nat One After Snow. Uh, I hope each and every one of you guys had a great week. I know I did. I love to say that each and every time, but it's so true. I really do hope you guys had a great week. Um, I'm going to actually open up Discord on the, um, what is it called? The website server. Oh, nice. That way I don't have to. Ah, shit. How does it work? Um, let's see if I can do it. I don't know. I'm on the ground. <laughs> oh, I yeah, won't okay, be a is part like, of this system. What? This is what is sure that is adorable there. pink plushie? <laughs> it's a little <laughs> dragon. <laughs> I, his wings, and he's even I got like it. a snaggle tooth. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. I want the I want the little stuffed dragon. <laughs> I have no. A friend got it for me. I have no idea. Where she got it? I, I have. Oh! <laughs> hey. This is a this is skull animal. He he is a a a bone wolfie. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> wolf. I love that. All right. Yes, because these these were made. They're like animals who have died, whose spirits still inhabit their corpse. So the the little bones and his little heart and his little. Wolf face, toe beans. So we now are on the the net one after snow on our Discord channel, guys. Uh, real quick before we start, if you don't know anything about what we're talking about here on the net one after snow, uh, I ask you guys to give us uh, questions to ask the party, to ask the characters, to ask the group, to ask the players. Whatever you would like about our campaign or D&D in general, uh, and you can ask us on Discord, you can ask us on Twitter, wherever you can get a hold of Nat One Fun, and we'll be sure to ask questions during these shows. These shows will take place on the very first weekend of every single month, so that way you get to know the party and get to know our players just a little bit better. Alright, so using that, I believe these are all the questions, uh, starting with... Uh, only question, why is it all out of order? That is very strange. That's fine. I'll, I'll just... It. Yep. I'm just going to pick some at random. So, uh, to start off the night, guys, first off, I want to say, first and foremost, thank you guys for being here as players, for being here uh, along in this journey uh, through the creation of Nat One Fun. Uh, through everything that the trials and tribulations that come with streaming our game um, All that stuff you guys I met you guys as strangers and, and now I see each and every one of you guys as good friends So thank you guys for being here Thank you for having me as a guest. Hey, no problem. No problem at all. So let's pick at we random love you too, Falcon Wolf. <laughs> Let's pick at <laughs> random the very first uh, question is from Zer Z E R on Discord, who says, "Um, the uh, why does Kinraba have red hair? Does she steal souls or something? Oh, and the same with her eyes. Her sclera is black. Is there something to that as well, or was that primarily a design choice?" So that goes out to you, of course, Seth. Um, well, my head canon is that well. Well, it's not really a spoiler anymore since she mentioned it to Leoden, but her father is a fairly powerful wizard back in the Underdark. So I get the impression that there's pro he, he dabbled with an awful lot of things, so I imagine there's probably some infernal influence in there a little bit. So it's a bit like a drow tieflin, really, how they get unusual features from their bloodlines. So she's probably got a little bit of that mixed in there somewhere. All At right. least that's my head cannon for it. So. Hey, you know what? But your head cannon is cannon. I mean, it's your character. <laughs> so. Oh yeah. Fair. Fair point. Okay. Yeah. Cannon, so you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's can it is cannon. So all right, excellent. Good. Thank you very it's much. Got a bit of the devil in there. There you go. And my head cannon. And my head cannon able is level twenty. <laughs> no, he's <bad. laughs> is that why he's always running in guns blazing? He just thinks he's way yeah. more powerful than he actually is. <laughs> At least it's not fanning. <laughs> oh no. 
In All my right. head, can and Abel survive the match we have? <laughs> hey, that uh, happened today. So, right? yes. we move on with another question. This one, uh, oddly enough, from Yotain on Discord, who says... Yotain. Uh, who in this group is more afraid of Dan's dream sequences as a player? Who is who is just not prepared for a Dan dream sequence? <laughs> yeah. Well, now that Leoden's actually uh, had one for herself, hers wasn't too bad. Oh no no no! That wasn't the question. <laughs> the question was was just as a player. Sequences were bad. As a player. I'm horrified <laughs> every single time. A, guys, I don't know if y'all have ever experienced a DM taking another player away for a thing. <laughs> That's terrible. Especially when you want to know all the things. <laughs> but when, when the DM's like, when the DM all of a sudden is like, Leoden. Ugh. <laughs> that silence before like, nope. your name. Nope. Nope. Every time you nope. go to take a long rest, I'm like, don't say my name. Don't, <laughs> don't say, say it. I just want to sleep, first... motherfucker. Half of this campaign afraid of going to sleep. <laughs> That's all that happens to Grimly. My from, notes are from... now Grimly has his normal night terrors. <laughs> yeah, now, now it's just chill. But I'm just. Um. I think when the when Dan takes us away in a dream sequence, I really enjoy it because I don't know what to expect. Um, so I'm not as afraid anymore. Um, but at the at the start, it was terrifying. I am petrified, like oh fuck, because Loth hates me. So I am <laughs> petrified. <laughs> It's just one day. It's like you know, it's it's coming. It's it's coming. It's just like you don't know when. That's the thing. I I am terrified, and I'm just waiting for like when we use Leoman's tiny hut. Just automatically, we just have Grimly just scream in the middle of the night, and Abel's like, "Oh, that's normal." <laughs> <laughs> like literally halfway through, or just halfway through the night, and we just hear. <laughs> 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 Uh, just from now on, even though, you know, I'm not a normal player, just wherever he's at in the middle of the night, if there's a dream <laughs> sequence, he's going to wake up, shiver, shrug, and go back to sleep. <laughs> I'm going to turn myself around so it looks like I'm looking at you guys at least. Um, all right. So just thank you for the Brad, question. It's going to be bad. Um, we pick up with another question here, uh, also from Discord. It says, uh, from Hoopla Hit Texas, says, when building your character, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll go around the table. When building your character, are you a winger or a planner? Uh, AKA, do you fly by the seat of your pants or do you have like long story plots that you put out before you say, yes, okay, that's my character. Uh, and we'll start from, uh, we'll start from the far end of the table. We'll go with Leoden. Or Ray, in general, now. Uh, so, I'm a planner. If you were to look at my D&D Beyond, I have 15 plus characters that I have never played, but they are great ideas, and I slowly work on their backstories as inspiration comes to me. Uh, I use a spark of an idea, I use inspiration from other fictional characters, what have you. I, I, I don't generally wing anything <laughs> in life, as let alone <laughs> in D and D. And I don't mean, and I mean creating characters. I don't mean how my characters act. Sure, uh, Ali. What about you? Uh, I am a planner. I too have a list of characters that I have never played. <laughs> um, but whenever it's time totally going to be pulling another one <laughs> nice brad grimly was built a little bit at a time um i wanted to originally play a barbarian in this campaign but i was told that it was already taken so i was like well i looked at the lore and i saw that there were dwarves in the north so i was like well that could be fun 
And so it started there, and then I just tried to come up with a reason why my character would be in Bryn Shander. So I slowly started developing his backstory that way. Um, I, I like I like that kind I of just, thought process too. Kind of slowly rolling into it, you know what I mean? Instead of having yeah. this, you know, gigantic thing. Right. But then I also worked with Dan to like weed some stuff out as well, um, which helped a lot. So that was a big plus um, with my little book and and everything else. The dreams yeah. that the dreams were like, I didn't know that was coming. That freaked me out. <laughs> but the book, the book I picked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have I should have really put in like capital letter letters and everything like horror campaign. Like, I'm really, yeah. really going to mess with your characters. <laughs> like. Really? <laughs> All right. Uh, what about you, uh, Falcon? Since you're here, you're on the way there. Mm, I, I'm a I'm I'm a bit of both. Um, as far as I, if I have nothing going on, I will, because especially because I play Pathfinder and Five E both, I'll sit down and knock out four, six characters in a day. Um. I, I'll, I'll look at the characters if I have a little bit to go on about the campaign that I'm using it for. Mm -hmm. uh, I can quickly flesh out a full character in a in a in a couple of hours. Nice, yeah. Uh, what uh, about you, Trey? Um, I, I'm similar to uh, Brad. Like I have, well, I used to have like a thousand just characters in my D and D Beyond because I'm a DM and I never play characters. <laughs> um, but when I when I made Abel, I kind of just wanted to play just a dude, um, just a regular ass dude, because I find that interesting. Just like a regular person that has to is forced to like go out. Um, so when I made him, I just made a first level ranger, and I didn't know what subclass. I didn't plan any of that stuff. I don't like plan my feats or anything or what I'm gonna take at certain levels. So I just sort of play it by ear and let the story dictate. A lot of the time what i'm gonna do sometimes i'll like uh i had one character anyways i'll multi-class in the classes that make no sense <laughs> optimization wise because i feel like it's a good story yeah i mean yeah as long as it makes sense story wise not necessarily makes sense like uh metal wise yeah yeah that's right. great uh what about you seth I'm probably going to have to say more of a planner, but I think that's just because I played Pathfinder so much more before I got to 5e. Like, oh my god, I've I had tons of characters and I got tons on my D&D &D Beyond, but I, no, I, I'm a planner. Like, I put way too much into just one single character. I asked if I could lower my dice rolls, King Rama, just to fit the story I had in mind for yeah, right. no, there, there, there was definitely uh, a ridiculous dice roll for uh, Kinrava, like on her character creation. Oh, yeah, I, I was got like, it here actually. My original dice rolls were 15, 18, 13, 17, 15, and 11. Like, give me a break when 11 is your lowest roll. That's crazy. So we yeah. took like one of those high yeah. rolls and made it like a fucking eight or something or nine. Something. I was crazy. like, hey, so she's not supposed to be this strong, like, physical-wise, so... <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, good on you, it's good on you. Um, myself, uh, I would say, I would say I'm very much a fly-off-the-seat-of-my-pants kind of guy. Um, I like to create my, my character, like my, or I'm sorry, like my class and my, my subclass, kind of like, I kind of have like an idea of where I want to go subclass-wise. Um... But other than that, I, I think I mainly focus on my uh, the race that I'm going to be like, you know, am I going to be a dwarf or am I going to be a lizard person or am I going to be a Kenku or something like that? I don't really care about like the, the exactly like the class that I'm playing. I kind of come up with that stuff as the story progresses more like, you know, the way Brad kind of has uh, morphed grimly into what he is today. Um, that's kind of how I roll with it. Hoopla, great question. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. It's a character in class unique amongst your other tabletop. Uh, it begins. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to, too. I'm going to send this, uh, to Lid and, or I'm sorry, Ray, because I already know the answer, but I'd like for her to talk about it because she talks about it the most. 
Is your character, oh, I'm sorry, this is from Roven Doug, by the way, on uh, Discord. Is your character and class unique amongst your other tabletop no. experiences or similar no. to other characters you played? She's super weird and very oh, uncomfortable. No. I'm sorry. Like, I want, I, I want, uh, she, every single thing she does <laughs> makes me and all my other characters want to like run out of the room screaming, but silently so they don't get, so they're not heard. <laughs> they're all rogues. <laughs> she is. Except now because I've played a character that's not a rogue. I will fully admit I have a druid and a sorcerer that are actually getting a little bit of playtime. But yeah, it's weird and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 as if I were to put on someone else's skin and not have their skeletal frame. <laughs> <laughs> that is creepy and also enlightening. Thank you. <laughs> it rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> All right, so uh, we will have um, a fish asking the next few questions. Oh, God. Okay, cool. You, did, you only changed there. You didn't change there. All right, so... Um, Let's see. We will move on nope, nope. to the next question. Thank you very much, Lita, by, or Ray, for answering that question. I apologize if I continue to call you by your character's name. <laughs> it's just second nature at this point sometimes. Um, oh, this is wonderful. Uh, this is from Lochness from Discord, who says, When traveling together, we learned that Olanu does not like to be called that unless they are close. Was there something in her past that caused her to want to be called Iceheart instead of Olanu? Uh, yes, so essentially it's just, it's more of how her uh, tribe or clan uh, kind of works. Um, her family members are the ones who call her Alanu, everyone else calls her Iceheart. Alright, so yeah, it's like a, a family based thing, so you would say that everybody, not even just close to you, but like related to you, is more often not going to be calling you Alanu. Can't wait to meet him. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Let's see. Let's go with. All right. We'll go with this question uh, from Shiny Stevie on Discord, who says, uh, "We'll give this question to Brad." If you would be in the position to be able to change anything about your character, stats, talents, oh. subclass, or maybe decision, uh, I'm sorry, maybe a decision the character made, what would it be and what would you replace it with? I That's a really tough question. That. And I know I thought answer. about it. <laughs> I thought about it as well for a, a little bit. Um, Oh, it's just really tough because when you're playing a game like this and everything's improvised and on the fly of the moment, um, you kind of like go with your gut. So I don't think I would change anything per se. Um, no, I, I really like where my character's going, actually. So, so not a, not a single a change, huh? Nothing. No. Perfect. No. Nope. What in it? <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I mean, hey, if you like the way your character's going, I mean, you don't need to change anything. Maybe everything that has befallen Grimly has just been there to build him uh, and make him even better. Uh, all right. Let's see. <laughs> this goes out to the whole group. Uh, Zer, again, from Discord, asks... Is anybody still worried at the fact that Grimly still probably has a chest burster in him? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. A yes. <laughs> I'm not worried. I'm excited. <laughs> Why do you nah. think Wait, your the... character's excited or Trey's excited? Trayvon James Terry is very excited. <laughs> okay, because Ray is also excited. Leodin is horrified. <laughs> 
Sure, of course. No, as players, as players. Okay. No, I am I really a scared. Lot of for that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Grimley's Grimley's focused on everything else. He's not really worried about what that is, unless something transpires. And right now, there are more important matters. Yes. I mean, that's why Kinrod was asking, like, Braum, like, hey, you said this person had clerical magic. Where the hell can we find them? <laughs> like, uh, we got an issue here. <laughs> that's a good move, Brad. Let, let the crazy shit happen. That's All what right. I would do. So this is a question from Kiddly on Discord, who says, I have a question for everyone. Or those that feel comfortable answering, of course. What has been the hardest part so far emotionally for your characters not for you as a uh, a player oh, oh no no it says no i apologize it's the exact opposite as a player <laughs> what uh has been the most emotional part of this story for you uh being that you know is it your character has befallen something uh nasty uh or maybe you know a, a fallen comrade or dreams what be you uh so we'll start from the left this time seth um is there anything that's affected you? Anything like uh, emotionally in this storyline? Anything. Anything at all? Do you feel, Seth? Well, I am British, so answer you me, know. Answer but, me this um, question, Seth. Do you feel? Do you feel? <laughs> I can't hide it with that terrible. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> honestly, I think. I think do for you feel? for the player, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. It's Probably a lot of interactions with Trovus, because like the truth is, is that Kinrava, why she doesn't like, she doesn't owe him any ill will, but she's not exactly like, oh, I love you, yeah, this is great. She's she's really not. So I'm just sort. Of, it makes me feel guilty <laughs> as a player because I'm like, oh god, like she doesn't, uh, she wouldn't, she wouldn't do anything bad, but she, if something happened to him, she'd really just shrug her shoulders. <laughs> And it makes me feel awful as a player. Like I'm like, oh no, why? Yeah, I mean, I agree. It's 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 tough playing a character that is very shut out from open emotionally. You know, openness emotionally. Yep. Uh, when as a human being, it's tough sometimes to just shut out emotion from somebody who is clearly trying to gain some kind of rise out of you or even to show affection yeah it's it's really weird because like before i made kinrava like a lot of my other characters were fairly like open with how they feel felt and their emotions and such but no she's just sort of like mm, that's nice and then just goes about her business <laughs> and i'm like i mean she does have thoughts on it but the player's like oh god why are you doing this this is terrible why yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh trey what about you anything um, I was trying to think. I'm kind of emotionless. I'm a yeah. robot over here. I, I've heard that you've um, you've never shown emotion ever. <laughs> uh, the only thing I can think of right now is way back at the beginning and the intro thing when it was just me and you, and you did the dream of my dad in mm -hmm. the mine. That was that. Uh, that got me real sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It made me feel real bad. I'm not. I'm uh, not. Probably... I'm not laughing at you. Of course, I'm laughing at the the situation, <laughs> the way you're you're talking. <laughs> um, also, Grimley's moment with you when we said that we made a promise after you got knocked. Oh, there was so that was a good moment. When I made when we made the promise, whenever you were down in the bar or whatever, and then me and Alanu mm -hmm. came down, and I was like, "Look yeah. at me! I promised that." That was pretty heavy awesome for me yeah 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 brad what about you um yeah uh during my epic dream sequence i buried an axe into my Ooh. best friend's chest Ooh. Oh. that was rough yeah. that was rough that was so good i just rewatched that it was super rough so did i so so that moment, I thought I was about to do something real badass, like, oh, I'm going to fight back against this monster, right? And as soon as he said that I buried it into something I catch purchased within this, and the eyes dissipate, 
And I was like, fuck yeah. And then he just dropped that bomb on me and I was like, fuck no. <laughs> I think that was, it went from fuck yeah to I fuck think, you. <laughs> it was an epic moment. Um, great storytelling. Oh, as a player, I was holding back tears. Um, but it was so it was so good that like I can't be mad or upset. It was just it was quite visceral. It was quite like you could almost feel the tension in the room when it happened. And that was like through the Internet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was that was a tough moment. That was a tough moment for sure. Yeah. When Such you start getting moment. attached to your character and even the backstory kind of matters to you, right? So when you do something like that to somebody that's important to your character, it kind of freaks you out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Bro, uh, you touch my wife. Allie? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you touch my wife. We won't they're take gonna, that out of context. They're going to they're they're live and they're going to be happy and I'm going to have kids. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Alana losing the only person that she had ever formed a close connection to in the Ten Towns. Uh, losing yeah. Ian. That was, that was tough. Nuts. I I I still remember that. I remember Ian Cognito. Uh, I still remember. <laughs> I still remember the moment when Olanu heard and she was like busting through the crowd to get to it just oh to see. God. I was like, I immediately knew that she, like, Ali was in that moment. And it, it just, you, I, you, you, you just like yeah. this the whole time. Like, <laughs> yep. Oh my God. Falcon, so good. enough down. spam. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody is hydrated. Out of alcohol. <laughs> Everybody need to turn up I do, there. I do need to hydrate with a question mark though. Yes, mm. yes, you do. All you right. need to hydrate. Dehydrate. All right. Um, and lastly, uh, Ali <laughs> or Ali <laughs> Ray. I was like, oh, go for it again. I don't have yeah. the question. Ha has anything <laughs> has anything affected you emotionally during this game, or have you felt nothing for what's been happening for the past twenty weeks? <laughs> yeah, completely, and totally. I'm cut off from all emotions. So good, good, good. What? What? Okay. I'm gonna make this. I know. I know one. Get. Hold on. I know one. <laughs> I know one of your feelings. Just one of them. Um, I personally have a lot of mental health issues, and I see a therapist about it weekly. Sure. Um, just in complete and total honesty. Mm -hmm. So there are times when I go, "Hey, I need to choose. I need two seconds to talk about my fake reality," just because it affected me. And she goes, "Okay, let's go." Because I, I told her about D and D from the beginning. Um. So, what affected her most, because that's what I'm answering, nope, that's not her, what affected me the most was um, Ian's death, because I was not prepared for it in any way, shape, or form, it just kind of came out of the middle of nowhere, like death does, and um, the dream sequence that I finally had. I put my personal, I put myself on mute for the next like 10 minutes to 15 minutes of the stream because I was tearing up and I didn't want any ugly cry to come out <laughs> just in case Aww. it came out. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I, in my backstory, have put personality to all the people that are in the troop and equated them to people I know in real life. And so that was rough. <laughs> <laughs> so That's that, interesting. Those are the, those are That's the big interesting. ones. I never thought of that. Don't mess it act, folks. Don't mess it act. <laughs> That's method acting. Don't do it. It's yeah, terrible. I mean, it it's could, so bad. It leaks. So there, bad there's. For your psyche. There's a, I mean, there, there's a straight up thing called like a uh, character leak or like, you know, Dean, what, what is it? Reality leak. I can't remember what it is, but it's basically where you take these characters and you make them or whatever. And the motions and the things that happen to you in game that you feel while you're in game leak into your real life at times. And 
you'll feel sad or you'll feel extremely happy or you'll feel mad and then after the game you bring it into real life and you go to your appointment sad or you go to your appointment mad or you go happy and D&D can have that effect on you and yeah it's cathartic in such a way in such a way that you can get things off your shoulders you can do things that you can't normally do in real life um but uh you know it's it's somewhat therapeutic at times as well um but considering that i'm not technically allowed to like hit people in real life (laughs) great (laughs) <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, clubbing somebody over the head with a maul and making them look like uh, Glenn when he gets <laughs> punked around by uh, Negan. That's People would frown on you for doing that. I mean, and hey, like look, the DM. Reaction in real life. The DM needs some therapeutic uh, bashing as well, okay? I mean, let's, let's be honest here. I had a great time bashing Abel's brains in, so... Um, no. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be a running theme. <laughs> oh, you guys are gonna beat this monster? Yeah. I'm just gonna Fuck you, Abel. This you guys gonna... and kill Abel real quick again. So, speaking, speaking of that monster, if I, if I remember correctly, you oh. made him immortal so long as that orb was active and not stowed. You could have wailed on him ah! all freaking day. So, That's one of the other actual effects of this thing is it makes it so it like it calls out to every dragon no. to its location. No. It has a bunch of random effects if you touch it, activate it. Um yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make him so some of these enemies are like immortal and uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, there were oh there were immortal my. characters during this last episode for sure. Um, we're gonna stick with the questions and and finish up on uh the the next couple and uh after that uh we can go and and talk about anything about the the campaign um in general like in 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 terms of like the episodes and stuff uh and so we're gonna pick up with uh, a question from jay or arthdor in chat in uh discord uh coming in with a late question says what has been the hardest oh and this is for uh, this is not my my words the illustrious dungeon master uh what has oh come on you can read I'm it for yourself. It right now. Oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. What has been the hardest moments, or what have been the hardest moments during this campaign for you, uh, from both the DM perspective and if I were a player? Uh, so uh, to answer the first question, um, it, it, the hardest moments for me as a DM, uh, I would specifically, I would have to say, first off, Ali has been a longtime good friend of mine. Uh, since like before uh, I met this crew here, we know each other in real life. Uh, you know, we've known each other for years. Um, when Olanu or Iceheart starts yelling at a character, uh, an NPC that I am playing, my heart sinks because <laughs> my my friend is yelling at me and I'm scared. <laughs> I'm a scared little boy. <laughs> And I have feelings. I'm um, I'm scared. <laughs> no, I am absolutely uh, terrified of my friends being angry or mad at me or you, you know having something negative to say. And she is such a good actress. Whenever she is in that mode and playing Olanu to that T or Iceheart to that T, that I do get terrified and I do stumble on my words as if I'm being yelled at by Iceheart. <laughs> that is a natural reaction. That is not me doing like some, oh, like, they're scared of her. Um, if there's a, I think there was a time that she was yelling at somebody who was supposed to be playing the fact that they didn't care that she were. That was very difficult for me. <laughs> that was very difficult for me to not act yes. scared or not act skittish as she yelled at me. So I would say that is probably the hardest part so far uh, from the campaign as a DM perspective. She hasn't allowed you to call her Olanu. <laughs> <laughs> can I just say? Can I just say in the first episode, Olanu yelled at Abel. 
<laughs> and I was like, oh god, oh no. Did she? What did she, what did she yell at you be? for? I can't remember. <laughs> It was when I was going towards the polar bears. She was like, get your ass over here. I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck. I was so scared. Guys, Every time I she yells. I too much stage work. I am not intimidated by any of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's good that. to know. <laughs> that's good to know. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do have trouble with it. Well, I think it's, I, to be honest, I think it's just Allie. I think we have that connection that it's like, you know, I know she is like the gentlest soul and she's just like, you know, she's nice, the nicest person in the world. Why is she yelling at me? Why is she yelling at me? <laughs> no, um, so anyways, to answer your second question though, if I was a player, I would say the hardest part probably to get over, or not get over, but like the hardest part in the campaign, um, would just be... Probably the lack of brightness, like not like not literally, but like the lack of uh, jovialness and and uh, really cartoonish like um, things or whatever during the game. It's a very serious campaign. It's a horror based campaign, uh, and it's not like your normal slapstick comedy um, that I'm kind not necessarily used to as a player. But I do like to play bard. That should probably go as far as as you need to know about, you know, what I play and what I do when I play when I when I game. Um, but uh, when I when I play, I try to make jokes. I try to make quips. I try to make you know light of situations and stuff like that. And when you have a mage burning at the stake, when you have a uh, you know a best friend dying in front of you, when you have you know lovers dying and family members dying and stuff like that, like constantly almost throughout the 20 episodes that we've done now, uh, that would be very difficult for me as a player, uh, to be honest. And that's basically what it comes down to. I probably wouldn't be playing a bard in, in this situation for sure, because I would be very like, <laughs> she holds up the glass. Hell yeah. Uh, props to her for being able to play a badass bard in this dreary, terrible situation that we're in. Um, all right, we'll do one more question here. We're gonna pick a good one. Wow! Anonymous, Holy! Anonymous zero. No. Jeez, three thousand bits from anonymous cheer. Yeah. Holy anonymous. crap! Everybody's taking care of you tonight, man. Dude, I, I just uh, this community is insane. Really Posture is. check, everybody. Tom's dead. Let's see. So this is a good one. This is a good one. And Zare had some great questions, by the way, guys. Zare had some wonderful questions. We're gonna pick Zare as our last questions, and we're gonna run through the gamut of our players here. Zare on Discord asks, "What weighs most heavily on your character's mind right now?" So, starting from, we're gonna mix it up. <laughs> oh, Allie, God. Allie, what weighs on Alanu's mind right now? Uh, probably gonna be that perhaps things are taking too long. Uh, oh, she just. At first, it didn't really seem like it was that big of a deal because they were working relatively uh, towards some leads. Um, but it seems like now they're just doing a whole bunch of odds and ends for the Ten Towns, and that's not necessarily helping her people. Excellent. I agree. I totally agree. If I was in that position, that's exactly how I'd be feeling. Uh, Seth! Is there anything weighing on uh, Ken's mind? <laughs> no. Wow. Seth, <laughs> do you have feelings? Seth, <laughs> Seth, do you have feelings? <laughs> Hold on, let me just let me just get my heart and put it back in my chest. No, no, no. Um, Stop it! You know Ray cares for Seth. <laughs> no, um, hold on. 
<laughs> no fucks <laughs> given. <laughs> if I'm going to be honest, probably that tiefling we ran into, the blue one, or the white one, and yeah. actually at this current moment, Hop Hell. Because Hop, with the tiefling, she watched her cast Dimension Door. So Kinrava's instantly just like, if she's strong enough to cast that spell, she's strong enough to be a problem. Plus she's also thinking, well, she mentioned Arcane, which means if she's a wizard, I need to murder her ass and get that book. Because <laughs> there's no other way I'm going to get anything here. And then there's like, also Harpel, who she saw coming out of the bookshop, carrying books with an owl on her shoulder. She's like... You're a fucking wizard, Harry. I know what you're doing. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> lizard. Or a lizard. Wizard! She's not a Would lizard! you say... Do you mean Veliny? Veliny. Veliny. Sorry, I say Veline. Right. I don't know why. But yeah, she's also totally just fine. like... I just wanted to make sure. She's also just thinking, why are there so many wizards up in the middle of nowhere? Now that we know that that tower was there, lizard. and the simulacrum mentioned there was more, then you know... Maybe that's why, but she's also just thinking, okay, so if, Ve if Veleny is a wizard, how do I steal her spellbook? <laughs> <laughs> right now, that's, that's what she's thinking, so, but she's also like, you know what, maybe she just weighing, she wants a shit spell. What's weighing on Kin Rava's mind is how can I steal from more wizards? Got it. How can, I kill, how can I kill more wizards and steal <laughs> their spellbook? Oh no, how she's also- she's, Set she's them on fire! Honestly, I mean, she's oh, honestly I'm more worried them. about. She's honestly more worried about that wife Tieflin more than anything else right now, just there because go. she's that's... got really bad vibes. Yeah, I mean that's that's true. She she didn't say all but maybe like three words before she was like bye, and that was it. So yeah, um, she's like dimension door. That's gonna be a problem coming down at us at some point. <laughs> possibly. I mean, who knows. All right, so moving on, let's move on to Brad. Brad, what's weighing on oh. Grimley's mind? There's a plethora of things, but <laughs> I would I guess say what is first... most weighing on Grimley's mind? So we don't we're not here for an hour. <laughs> yeah. First and foremost, I think that um he is worried that or wondering <laughs> whether word of Torg's death has made it back to his clan. Um, and what, what, what he'll have to deal with when he, when, or if he eventually goes back as well as if he'll ever be forgiven for abandoning Torg. I think that's the most, that's also why he thinks that he has the dreams he does every night. Very deep, very deep. But yes, I agree in the terms of, you know, Grimley's current situation is not even nearly as important as what has happened in the past and, you know, just constantly weighs on him. So it's just like, yeah, we're doing this thing, but it's like, I really have this thing in the back of my head that's just always there kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, honestly, his main thing is how do I achieve redemption? Um, what will get me a way out of being like a betrayer to his clan or have a bad name towards his clan? Yeah. Because he ran. All right. Uh, Trey. Is there anything? Uh, yeah. that Hi, Dan. Is there anything that Abel is currently uh, dwelling on? Is there what is weighing heavy on Abel's mind? Uh, I feel like Abel's is pretty obvious. Um, obviously, he has a wife at home that's pregnant. Then he has to, that's just always constantly in the back of his head. Uh, but also, I think it's very similar to Alani's. Um, he came out to bring the sun back, and help as many people as possible sure but stuff is just getting piled on and piled on and piled on and it's gonna get to the point where it's like all right i can't do any of this i need to go figure out how to do this thing and then so i can go home and uh but 
right now i feel like the duragar stuff is seeming like a bigger enough of a threat to be like okay well i have to take care of this for sure yeah yeah all right and last but not least ray is there anything weighing in on leaden's mind currently yes um she checked in with her family and the troop and various other folks regularly and she can't now and she knows she can't now she's very worried that they all think she's dead and or they have moved on with her life with their lives Ooh, that's a rough one that's a rough one i think i didn't thought... want to answer this question because i didn't want to give you more <laughs> <laughs> no no give me more ammunition <laughs> ammunition more no, no 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 so i i i I, I, love, same way. I love the fact that I love the fact that that's that's all this is. That's all this is, by the way. I just I'm writing everything down so that I can use it against you later. Um, <laughs> oh, I great. <laughs> I love the fact Wait, that. Warrior. Yeah, I love the fact that uh, Leoden's like, I guess. Not motive, but like the thing that kind of like drives her to get back is just not to be forgotten by those that she's left. I think that's pretty, pretty. Without giving too much away about her backstory. Yeah, this is not this is um, not about giving anything away. Yeah, that Just... was not the question, and I don't want to tell you because you didn't ask, <laughs> and your question wasn't asked. Um, she's just. <clears throat> she left the Myrock troop. For what she hoped would just be a few, like, months. Mm -hmm. And it has turned out to be much longer than that. And she's very, very, very worried that they yeah. all have not only forgotten her, but moved on with their lives. Well, I will take one single question from chat the next question must be directed at a single character or player give me one question from chat and we will answer that Go. right now be the first to ask a question oh my god yo tame <laughs> immediately damn it yo tame does grimly have the hots for olanu he keeps giving her things Great! I'm so glad he got that. <laughs> of course, you don't have to answer it, but you're more than welcome to. We all know the answer already. I'll give you this yeah. much. All right, I'll and on you, that I'll note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> Grimly has never had a girlfriend. That's all I'll say. Perfect. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on that note. Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the Nat 1 After Snow. Uh, we had a blast kind of getting to know our characters and players a little bit better, and I hope you did too. Um, if you have any questions in the future, please hit us up on Discord, hit us up on Twitter, uh, anywhere that you can message Nat 1 Fun, even leaving a comment on uh, YouTube. I see everything on YouTube and Everywhere in between, I am a social media master. I go on and check everything. So if you got a message, send it to us, and we'll ask it and see uh, if we can get uh, any any more information from our players here <laughs> next month. Remember, Thank it's you. on the first week of every month. We will do the uh, Nat One After Snow, where we will get a little bit more information through uh, the games that we play. So uh, with that, I hope everybody has a great week, and we'll see you next episode uh, once we pick back up. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with us, and see you on the next Nat 1 After Snow. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.